All right, your next performer, ladies and gentlemen, he's a self-proclaimed broke-back mountain love child of Urkel. <laughs> and the Fresh Prince of Bel Air, all the way from Mississauga, please welcome Michael Morrison. <laughs> So, uh, before I get started, I'd just like to say, let's give a nice warm round of applause for summer 2011. Uh, I, think, uh, uh, absolutely. I think some of you will agree that, you know, this summer has been a lot different than a lot of other summers. I don't know about you guys, but I've never actually been in a situation where the weatherman was wrong and I was okay with it. <laughs> the other thing that I found as well is that, ladies, I have to say, you guys really stepped it up in the attire department. <laughs> yes, absolutely. I love the way that some of you guys embraced summer 2011. It almost made girls an acronym that stood for G. I really love summer. <laughs> uh, a little bit about myself. I, uh, I hail from a place called Mississauga, which for some of you that may not know is about 30 minutes west of here. And, uh, and, and Mississauga is really known for a couple of key things. Uh, number one, it's evening establishment. Gentlemen, otherwise known as strict ones. <laughs> and, and in my opinion, having, having the oldest mayor on the face of the planet running the city. That's right, hey, everybody. Okay, so, so for some of you that don't know uh, a lady by the name of Hazel McCallion, let, let me give you a little verbal visual. Think of Cleopatra's sister, only she survived to this very day. <laughs> Unlike our lovely host here in uh, his, his uh, statement of me being a Brubeck Man love child of fictitious TV characters, no. Um, I'd like to say that uh, personally, I'm a, uh, what is it, I, I'm 100% Canadian. Jamaican vintage. <laughs> yeah, thank you. But, but I really love the handle that my wife gives me, which is the uh, Oreo from Ontario. <laughs> Caribbean compliments on the outside of it. <laughs> now, I just need to know, are there anybody, is anybody out there like me that maybe has those, you know, kind of those uh, one two parents, kind of that for, you know, yeah, the parents that fresh off the boat, be first, ask questions later, you know, the type of parents that I never saw my Canadian friends have. You know, I'll give, let, me, let me give you an example. Okay, like, for example, I had a buddy of mine, Jimmy Fulsang. Jimmy Fulsang and I, one time, we were going home with, what could be best described as subpar report cards. Okay? And, and, you know, and it was kind of funny because Jimmy and I were scared, but for different reasons. You see, Jimmy was scared because he was going to go home, and his concern was that he was going to be in the corner for the evening because of a timeout. Whereas my fear, <laughs> my fear was the fact that I was going to get trapped in the corner as I was fading to black from a knockout. <laughs> so, you know, and, um, and I guess that's the other thing, you know, that, that's one of the things that I love about this great country of ours is that, um, you know, we, we seem to treat things, I guess, what I like to say is we treat things differently. I love the way that we embrace multiculturalism. I, I find that um, we, we seem to, uh, you know, whereas our friends in the States, they kind of treat it like a melting pot, I believe that we cook it up like a bouillabaisse. <laughs> That's right, you know, um, you know, I, honestly, like, uh, but there are some things, it's not all biscuits and gravy up here, right? <laughs> really, because there are um, some things that I find that are, I guess, culturally specific. Um, an example is, um, for example, I can safely say that there's probably not a brother in this room that you would find bungee jumping. <laughs> now, I don't even want to get into the ancestral aversion that my people have to rule. <laughs> on X Games is a commentator. <laughs> you know, seriously, what white people call extreme sports, black people call the brush with death. <laughs> you know, or, or, or AKA a lynching malfunction. <laughs> so, now, as you know, I was saying earlier, I'm a 
I'm a bit of a homemaker. Uh, my, my actual job outside of this is homemaker. And, um, and really, it's a nice way of saying I'm a stay-at-home mom. <laughs> That's because my wife took my balls, stuffed them in a jar, and hid them in the cupboard. <laughs> but, uh, you know, and, and the other thing is, I'm, I'm about to, uh, I, before I leave, because i got to go pick up the kids from the babysitters, uh, I'll, leave you guys, I'll leave you guys with a little what's called take-home humor. Hopefully you can repeat this to your friends. Guy and his girl are in a hot, happy 69 session. So, he's like, I'll sing with you. And, uh, and as they finish up, Guy realizes that he's got a dentist, with, he's got an appointment, excuse me, with the dentist. So a little bit freaked out, Guy goes in, brushes his teeth a couple of times, downs about half a bottle of scope, and, uh, and then drives off to the dentist's office. Before he goes in, takes a couple of Tic Tacs, confidently walks into the dentist's office, sits down, and prepares himself for the procedure. Dentist stands up, goes over him, he's about to start the procedure, he backs up, he goes, hey man, have you been involved in any sexual activity today? Shocked! Okay, shocked! The guy sits up, turns around, looks at him, he goes, hey man, is it on my breath? The dentist goes, no, your forehead smells like shit. Oh!